meant there was some, some prayer going on around this altar. <laughs> there was some heavy prayer going around this altar. And um, and I, I normally wouldn't do this, but I, I feel it to share it. Share it. Um, as I was getting up, I was right over here, and as I was getting up, I saw a color. I know that sounds odd, but I saw the color orange, and, and I felt compelled by the Holy Ghost to, to kind of research that. And I want to share that idea last night. I want to share that with, with the congregation tonight. Orange is obtained by mixing red, and that represents the flesh, and yellow, which represents trials. The result is a color of fire that repre which represents the fire of God. Come on. Deliverance and passionate praise. Mm. Passionate praise. I don't find that, I don't serve a God of coincidence um, no. after the message that God laid on my heart. Um, performance versus passion. And then I see the color orange in this very place during that, that prayer meeting last night. Um, but I believe it. Right. I believe that that's, that's what the church has embarked on is um, not just passionate praise, but deliverance. I believe it tonight. Amen. I believe it. We're going to worship tonight. Light of the world, you step down into darkness.
this time that we're living in. Praise God, which is the end time. Praise God. Good to see each one here Amen. on a Wednesday night. Praise God. Brother Ben asked me to preach tonight. Yesterday, they just yesterday uh, that he asked me, and the uh, thing about that is, is I had already been up to the church here and writing scriptures down just in case. <laughs> Praise God. But uh, let's see what the Lord has for us. Yes. Uh, Hebrews, the 12th chapter, and we'll begin. Reading at verse 12, and I'll give you time to find it on your phone or in your Bible. Hebrews 12, and start reading at verse 12. It said, Wherefore lift up the hands which hang down, All right. and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. But let it rather be healed. All right. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Praise God. And you may be seated. You know, a lot of people will look at the way we worship sometimes, especially people on the outside and all, you know. Uh, look at the way we worship and, 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 and think maybe we're uh, too fanatical about you okay. know, the, the way we worship or just plain crazy. <laughs> uh, you know, and, 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 and it's because they don't understand. But as I begin to, to uh, more you begin to study the Word of God, the, the more you begin to realize that most everything out of the Word of God is connected with worship. Right. Uh, I believe it. It, 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 it. There is a connection there, I think, sometimes that we, we really don't realize. But I begin to read the Scripture where it simply said, uh, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I don't know about you, but I want to see the Lord. Amen. Yes. Uh, yes. My desire, my goal one day is to see the Lord. And I know when we when, <coughs> when uh, you, you, you read about holiness, you kind of draw up and think, "Whoa, I, I fall so short of that," you know. And we do, we you know, we do. We'll, we'll think that a lot of times. And so, so I, I, I begin to I just get tired of this holiness, you know. Uh, and I, and I, want, I want us to look. Uh, of course, we realize it's important because he's, he's already told us in his word that uh, without it, no man uh, shall see the Lord. Amen. Uh, you begin to, and there's something about when you begin to study and study uh, on, on these words from, from the Hebrew and from the Greek and, and how they lead you to another word, they lead right. you to another. If, if somebody have studied it out, studied that way, you'll, be, you'll begin to learn that you have to. <laughs> Uh, almost run a complete reference on every word to 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 understand what the meaning of those words is, and we know. But you know, the holiness uh, one of the one of, and we're just going to look at it and what it what it leads to. Uh, first of all, uh, holiness is a state of purity. Hmm. We know that, in, 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 or it's a uh, you know, or sanctification, or, right. or cleanliness. But it also, it meant the word, uh, uh, holiness meant piety. And somebody said, what's piety? I'm glad you asked, because I had to look it up. <laughs> piety, li listen to this. The quality of being religious or reverent, and th then, I, then I said, well, what's reverent? What, is, what does that mean? Reverent means to be in awe of or showing deep and solemn <coughs> respect. All right. But piety 
will lead you to the word godliness. Huh. Or godliness will lead you to the word piety. It also means the same thing in, in, in this case as, as holiness. Which piety also means the worship of God. All right. The worship of God. All right. Okay, to be in to be in awe, showing deep and solemn respect, which also will lead you to the word pious, which pious is having or showing strong religious feelings for God or devotion to God, which will lead you to being consecrated to God. Right. So, as we begin to look at it, I, I, it here, here's another one, you know, stay with me, on holiness. It. It, 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 you know, it led you to uh, the quality of being religious or reverent, which reverent is it to be in awe and show deep and solemn requests, but it also referred you to reverence, which will lead you to the word modesty. Come on with it. Which modesty means orderly or of good behavior, manner, or appearance intended to, vo to avoid Im impropriety or indecency. So, so, so you, you begin to involve all of this in the holiness, in, in, in how, how deep do I serve God? Right. Or how, how sincere? What is the quality of, of, of my worship? Right. How sincere is my worship? See, some, sometimes, and we do it, we might well all say, Amen or hold me to it. A lot of times our, our, our worship is just because everybody else is doing it. You know, because that's what we're used to doing. We used to come in, clapping our hands. Yeah. We used to come in, lifting our Thank hands. You. But when we really get in touch with God, it's when we get down with that sincere, right. deep uh, admiration or in awe of worshiping Him, of who He is. And it leads me to a state of purity uh -huh. in my heart and in my mind that I can worship Him more or more deeply. All right. So, <clears throat> piety, which is godliness or holiness, means a worship of God in a sincere way. Right. In a sincere way. See, see, if I'm not sincere about it, I'm really not doing no good, am I? If I, if I don't stand in awe of God and of who He is to the point that it causes me because of my, out of my respect for Him, I lift my hands. Out of my reverence of Him, I fall on my knees. Yes. Out of my reverence for Him, I began to get into a deep worship right. of Him. Right. Which brings me, as I worship, it brings me to a state of holiness. Yes. That's good. So, let's look, let's look on at, at, at some of the other things in the Word of God. Yes. About holiness. Let's go to Romans, the sixth chapter. I've got so many places marked. Y'all have to give me time too to find those. Go ahead. Ones. Romans the sixth chapter, verse sixteen. He said, "Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness." But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants 
of righteousness. Yeah. I know if he said, then he said, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members and servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. All right. So, so again, it becomes a deep devotion or reverence yes. or solemn respect to worship to God. Yes. Worship to God. Again, pious, having, a, having or showing strong religious feelings for or a devotion to God or consecrated to God. So now instead of yielding your members or the flesh to sin, uh -huh. you began to yield yourself to God and to His righteousness yes. and to His ways and to His Word. Yes. And you become obedient to it. Just as, as in times past you were obedient to sin. Uh -huh. You now become obedient to righteousness, which the deeper you get in God, the more into a state of holiness you begin to get. Right. You begin to come. That's right. So look. He said, I speak after the manner of men. He said, even so now yield your member service to righteousness unto holiness. For when you were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you're now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Hmm. But now, being made free from sin and become service to God, you have your fruit. Now notice this. Notice what it says. Being now made free from sin, whom the Son has made free is free right. indeed. Now being made free from sin and become servants to God. That's what is that not what we do when we turn to God? When we give yes. our lives to God, we become servants to God? Yes. He said, Now and become servants to God, you have your fruit. I mean, know we've got to bear fruit. Right? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. right. You have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. When, when we begin to yield our members to, to God, become servants of God, then the fruit that we bear becomes yes. holiness. All right. That means, and again, let, let me go back and, and, and tell you all the things that if you look up holiness and godliness, that it will lead you to piety, reverence, modesty. And you, you, can, you can go, there, there's others that, that it will lead you not. Lead you to, you'll be surprised hmm. at, at, at the things you'll find concerning godliness and holiness. But it's becoming a servant of God. Yes. I can't, I can't, I, I can't become holy on my own. Right. You know, he said in one place, be ye holy for I'm holy. I, I, I become a part of his holiness. His holiness, not mine, his. Let's look in Ephesians, the 14th chapter. Or, or fourth chapter, excuse me, fourth chapter. In verse 17. He said, This I say therefore and testify the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Having the understanding dark, darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. He said, But you've not so learned Christ. If so be that you've heard of him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Yes that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to 
the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Amen. Anybody ever had to pray, God, renew my mind? Amen. Renew my spirit, renew my yes. mind. Yes. Creating me a clean heart, oh God, and give me a nice spirit. Yes. Amen. He said, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man. Right. See, so that's what happens when we're born again. Or it's supposed to happen. You're supposed to, you, you're supposed to have let the old man die out and put on the new man. He said, and that you put on a new man, watch, watch this, which after God, born again, when you put on a new man, which after right. God is created, the new man is created in righteousness and true holiness. True. Huh? The new man. Mm -hmm. and that's why we have to be born again. That old man can't do it. Yeah. He has to be born again, the new man, the new creature in Christ. Look in 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. Fourteenth verse. He says, But be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? Right. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? In what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell with them and walk in them. Or I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God. And they shall be my people. Amen. Look at verse 17. Wherefore come out from among them. And be ye separate. Church we got to be separate from the yeah, world. Huh? Yeah. We got to be separate from the world. Amen. Huh? Yes sir. There's something wrong if I say I'm a child of God. And I still act like the world. Right. Hmm. Right. You, you know what that does mean? That, that means I haven't been born again. That's right. Because the Bible said that we're, in one moment we're buried with Him by baptism to arise and walk in the newness of life. Yes, sir. I've got, to, I've got to, I, the reason that you've got to be born again is that you've got to change the nature of the old man. That's right. That you take on a new nature. You take on a new nature. But he said, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. Somebody said, well, well, I don't know if I can do that or not. They'll think I'm different. That's what they're supposed to find. Mm -hmm. Huh? That's right. Uh, yes, so. I, I, if you're a child, that's what the world's supposed to think right. about you. Right. You're different. Notice Amen. It. You're different. Yes, you are. Somebody says, well, I'll, I'll, I'll lose some of my friends. Well, they're not much of a friend. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you. And you shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. But it didn't stop there. This continues in, in, in verse 1 of chapter 7. He said, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. And here's what we're supposed to do. Perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Right. right. Well, that goes that 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 perfecting that holiness in the fear of the Lord. That goes back to having to be in awe of 
are showing deep and solemn respect. All right. Are showing a strong religious feeling or devotion or consecration to God. Bless him, Jesus. Hmm. See, a lot of times when we worship, you know, we, we praise him, we worship him, we ought to, and we got to, because of who he is. Yes. Right? But there are other times we ought to be praising him and thanking him and lifting our hands to him because of where he's brought us from. Yes. Where yes. He's brought us to. Yes. 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 Amen. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Somebody said, why? Why perfecting holiness? Because without it, you can't see God. That's what the Word says. Right, say it. Amen. Huh? That's what the Word says. That's what it says. And holiness without which no man shall see God. That's right. That means I've got to stay separate from the world. Right. Got to. I've got to stay separate from the world. Amen. The Bible said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. That's it. Right. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. But look. But it goes back and, and, and here. I said all that to get to this. Because it can it, it, the connection there. Psalms 29 and 2 simply says this. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Mm -hmm. Worship all right. the yes. Lord yes. in the beauty of of holiness. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Now you think about all the yes. things of holiness and what they mean, the word grandeur. Beauty means the grandeur or the majesty or the splendor yes. of who God right. is. Right. The beauty of holiness. The beauty of, of that, that deep desire to serve God and live for God and walk separate from the world. Yes. In everything I do. And then in Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, the twentieth chapter, in verse one, it said, "And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, and with them other besides the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle." Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, say, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hazazon Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jeho Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. All right. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord, even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And moving down to verse 14. And then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Madaniah, a Levi of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, thou king Jehoshaphat, Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid, nor dismayed, by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, All right. but God's. All right. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jeruel. And ye shall not need to fight in this battle. All right. <clears throat> come on, little. This is where we get ourselves in trouble a lot of times. Yeah. Uh, we try to fight the battle without the Lord. Right. Mm -hmm. Blessing Jesus. I said we try to fight the battle without the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, when it's his battle. Yes. When it's his battle. 
He said, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself. Stand ye still and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Yes. Amen. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord. All right. Worshiping the Lord. Amen. This is how I fight my battle. Yes. This is how I fight my yes, battle. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh -huh. Amen. Howdy, God. Is that what the song said? This is how I fight my battle. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> but look. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and the children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel yes, with a did. loud voice on high. Loud. And they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. All right. Believe in the Lord your God, and so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall you prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers, unto the Lord and that should praise the beauty of holiness. Right. Hmm. Listen. Holiness is connected to praise. Yes. Mm -hmm. Holiness is connected to worship. It's right there. Yes, sir. And it becomes holiness when I become sincere about it. Right. It becomes holiness when I let the Spirit of God and the Holy Ghost clean me up. It yes. becomes holiness when I begin exactly. to separate myself from the world. Come on, come and on. let the Spirit of God cleanse me from my mind, yes. from my heart, and yes. everything within me. It becomes holiness when I walk Amen. in praise and yes. come on, in modesty and the right That's spirit right. and the right attitude. That's right. But that's him, Jesus. And begin to turn my back on the world and turn right. toward him. Right. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty, or they should praise the beauty of holiness. Right, God. Huh? And we read Psalms 29 and 2, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mm -hmm. Jesus. Right. Some, some of you may be too young, may not know. In, 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 in years back, and they may, a lot of them may still do it today. Those that don't understand the way we worship it, and, and, and uh, see, see, see the way, you know, faithful the church, the faithfulness, the, the praying and the prayer meetings and the worship right. and the way we worship. Oh yeah, you know that's them holiness people. Mm -hmm. yeah. you remember being, <laughs> yes. being called that's them holiness people. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then somebody, some would even call them holy rollers. <laughs> huh? Why? It was because of the passion they had for worship. Right. And the passion they had for serving God passion. and living for God and being yes. separate from the world. Yes. They were just, the singers were sent out that they should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they went out before the army, <laughs> uh -oh. if I'm going to have to fight a battle tomorrow, give me a good praise service That's tomorrow. It. That is it. Bless him, Jesus. Uh -huh. I said, y'all going to have to fight a battle tomorrow. Give me a good praise. Yes. 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 Bless him, yes. Jesus. Uh, yes. As they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for His mercy endureth forever. Look at this. This is how I fight my battles. Yes. <laughs> Every time. And when they began to sing and to praise, mighty God, mm. 
The Lord set ambushments yes. against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount yes. Syria, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Amen. And they were yes, they were. Smitten. Yes, they yes. were. Praise God. Praise Mighty God. God. Mighty Praise God. God. Thank God. Mighty Thank God. God. Thank God. Thank Mighty God. God. Thank you, Lord. This is how I fight my battle. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And then verse 14 again in Hebrews 12 and 14, just to remind them. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, make Thank you holy. You, yes. Make us holy. Lord, Amen. make us holy. Lord. Yes, sir. Because I want to see you one day. Lord, I want to see you one day. Praise God. Lord, Lord make us holy. I think we can all stand and pray for that. Lord, make me even more holy. Yeah. Lord, make me holy. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. We can all stand. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Bishop, for that message. Anyone have a, a prayer request before we leave the house of God or need prayer this tonight? 